Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and we are continuing our investments and loan series today by looking at a recurrence relation for annuities and this is for senior mathematics students. First of all, let's talk about the recurrence relation for an annuity. If you're in Queensland in Australia, you'll be getting this on your formula sheet. It looks just like this. Every recurrence relation is like a formula. We have terms on the right hand side, an equal sign in the middle, and then terms on the left hand side. Now, if you're not in Queensland, Australia, you need to check with your formula sheet. You've probably got something quite similar for an annuity, maybe a little bit different. Maybe the variables have different letters, but the principle will still be the same. So follow along and let's get going. So let's talk about what these terms mean. So first we've got this letter R. Well, you may not have seen R before. We've seen the letter I when we've been talking about annuities. However, R is something a little bit different. It's taking the interest rate as a decimal per compounding period, which we're familiar with, that's what I is, and we add one to it. And the reason why we add one to it is if we just multiply the amount that we put in the bank by the interest rate, we're gonna calculate the interest that's earned, not the amount after the interest is added. So this adding one actually gives us the amount after the interest has been added. So that's why it will enable the annuity to grow. Okay, so for an example, if you had an interest rate of 12%, per annum, meaning per year, and that's compounding monthly. When we divide 12 by 12, we get one. So that's going to be 1%, and 1% as a decimal is 0 0.01. So that will be our value for I. However, we need to add one to that, so R will be 1.01. .01. Now you need to make sure that you remember this step. That step's not on your formula sheet anywhere. You need to remember that and memorize it well. Otherwise, you're gonna have an annuity that does not make sense. It's gonna actually decrease in value potentially, um, or be a very, very small value, which won't be very helpful for your savings plans. Okay, let's look at the next variable, D. D is our payment that's added to the annuity each compounding period. So remember when we talked in our last video that one of the key features of an annuity is, is that we are adding to our investment every period. So if this was a monthly um, investment, every month we're going to put the same amount of money and put that aside into our savings into the future. So that's represented here by the variable D. Now I've seen other um, formula sheets, they have things like P for payment. It doesn't really matter what letter it is, you just need to remember it's the amount that's being added. Okay, we've also got this term here, A with a subscript of N. Now that's not a power of N, it's a subscript, it's lower, and all that means, it's like a naming convention. So all it means is it's the, the value of our annuity at period N. So we can actually take this recurrence relation at any point in the life of and the annuity, whether it's the period, the 20th period, that would be A20, or the 100th period, that would be A with a subscript of 100. What we're doing is finding the value of the annuity at that single point in time, we add the interest to it, and then we add the payment afterwards. So that's all that this recurrence relation is doing. Our last one here is a n plus one. Now I know that it starts to look a little bit confusing when you've got n plus ones and n's. All that means is we take a n, which is the value of the period at a particular point in time, and we're calculating the value at the next period. So this is one period after the nth period. So if n was equal to 20, the 20th period, then we're calculating the 21st period. 20 plus one is 21. So this follows on from our previous video as well. If you would remember in our previous video, an annuity only attracts interest for things that have been added in the previous period. And that's why we calculate the interest first on the amount that we have sitting in the bank, and then we add the payment on afterwards. So at this particular period, D does not attract any interest at all. It won't start to get any interest until the next period. So it's added afterwards. So that's something to, important to remember because that's gonna help us in our worked examples. Okay, so you might be asking, what on earth is this recurrence relation useful for? And my answer is not a whole lot, but it's useful for finding the next value or the next few values of an annuity. So if you're told that annuity in the 20th, um, 20th period is worth $10,000, you can find use that recurrence relation to find how much it's worth at the 21st period, 22nd period, 23rd, and so on. It's kind of tedious to have to work out every single period. There is a better way. We're gonna look at that in our next video. It's also useful for finding how long it takes to get your annuity to a certain value. And we're gonna talk about both of these ideas in this video. So let's look at our first worked example. 
we're going to write the recurrence relation for an annuity where the interest rate is compounded quarterly at 16% per annum and where $5,000 is added every quarter. Now, we've got some key information here. Let's unpack that key information. I always love to follow Polya's C plan do check for problem solving with worded questions. So let's look at our first key piece of information. We're told it's an annuity and that's the one thing you want to look out for because um, if it's not an annuity, you're going to use a different formula. So firstly, we're told it's an annuity. So boom, we know straight which recurrence relation to pull off our formula sheet. Second thing we're told is it's compounded quarterly. So that means and tells us we need to actually convert our interest rate per year to a quarterly rate. We're also told that $5,000 is added each quarter. Now we know something's being added because they told us it was an annuity, but if they didn't use that magic word annuity, you could also infer that by being told that the same amount of money is being added every period. That would also tell you it's an annuity and that you need to use this recurrence relation. So we're gonna write, write the basic form first. That's straight from our formula sheet. It's always a good idea to write the formula. Um, sometimes you earn marks for selecting the correct formula. This could be that situation. So always do that, never take a shortcut. And then we should always state our variables. These are what are the different parts of our formula. So firstly, our interest rate is 16% per annum. That's what we're told. We're gonna to change that to a decimal by dividing by 100. 16 divided by 100 gives us 0 0.16. And then we're gonna divide that by four to make a quarterly rate, which gives us a rate of 0 0.04. Now we need to add one to that to give us our value for R. So we'll get a value for R for our formula of 1.04. So that's a very key step. Showing that step's probably worth a mark, I would say. And then our value for D is 5,000. Um, we're told that in the question. And there's also an important thing that we need to state as well. Every recurrence relation, if you would remember, we need to have three parts to it. Now, we're only given two parts on our formula sheet. We're given the right, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. But there's this third part of a recurrence relation that's important for us to state. And that is, what is the value of the annuity at time zero? Well, at time zero, we don't have any money in the bank at all. So we've got a zero value for a zero. Now, you might be wondering, why do I even need to write that? Well, that's very important. Um, you could make the mistake of thinking the value of the annuity at time zero is $5,000. And I actually made that mistake myself when I started putting this PowerPoint together. It was a natural thought to think that you've already got 5,000 in the bank, but no, when the annuity starts, you have nothing in the bank and then you put the 5,000 in. So that's why it's important to understand what is the value at time zero. Okay, we're gonna substitute that now into the recurrence relation. So when we're stating a recurrence relation for a particular investment, we actually don't need to come up with the value for AN plus one or the value for AN. We leave those as variables and then we just write the value for R and the value for D. And we should also tell um, what A zero is and we did that by stating our variables. So let's now look and find the next three values of the annuity after three periods. We've got our recurrence relation, we're actually going to use it now. So firstly, we want to find A1. Now we know at time zero, there was nothing in the bank. So we're going to substitute into the recurrence relation, the value of zero where we see AN. And then we're going to add 5,000. So you can see in that first period that um, is happening, we're putting the $5,000 in the bank, but it's actually not going to incur any interest at all. Um, and we know that from what happens with an annuity, that it doesn't incur an interest in the first period. So that's why the value of A0 was zero. Okay, now this $5,000 moves into the second period now, and it's gonna come into the formula and replace AN for, and become the value from A1 will give us the value for A2. So we multiply that 5,000 by 1.04, and then we add $5,000 at the end, you'll notice that only the first 5,000 is going to attract interest, the second 5,000 will not. So we'll end up with $10,200 after two periods. Then we're gonna repeat this process again. In the recurrence relation where we see AN this time, we're actually going to substitute um, the value of AN with our value from the previous period of 10,200. It's gonna slide into the formula and we're gonna add 5,000 at the end and at the end of the third period, we'll have $15,608 in the bank. Now we've put $15,000 in, three lots of $5,000 payments. Um, 
and we've only attracted interest on two of those payments after three periods. We can see that here. Uh, we've got our first attraction of interest and our second attraction of interest. So we've actually only earned $608 after um, two periods, two quarters. That's actually not too bad, really, um, when you think about it. Okay. Um, so that's how we use a recurrence relation. We can find the next few periods. Now, it's a really good idea to have a look at the kind of working that I've sent, set out here. I've actually shown very clearly what I'm finding. Now, in an exam, you wouldn't need to write find A1, find A2. You would just simply need to write out what's here. A1 equals and show the substitution, show the answer. A2 equals, show what you've done with the substitution, show the answer for full marks. Um, so um, if you want to need, to need to pause here and copy down the working, that would be a fantastic idea. But let's move on now to finding out how we're going to use that recurrence relation a little bit further. We can actually use that recurrence relation to find out how many payments it will take before the annuity is worth more than $40,000. Now you might be thinking that's going to take a long time. Do I really have to write A1 equals this, A2 equals this, A3 equals this? No, you don't. You can actually use your calculator and use the iterative function on your calculator to work this out. So grab your calculator right now. I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to be working with a Casio. So firstly, what I do is I type into the calculator the amount of the payment, 5,000, and I'm going to press the equals button. And that will drop it down to the bottom of your screen right here. Okay, now this is important to note, that's our first payment that's gone in. So that's one payment. We need to make sure we count that first one as one. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to type in times 1.04. Your calculator will automatically add answer there and 5,000 will disappear off the screen. We're timesing it by 1.04 and then we add 5,000. Now your calculator knows how to do this with the correct order of operations. So when we press the equals button, we're going to get 10,200. So that's our second payment in. Now we keep pressing that equals button until we get to over $40,000. So we've got two payments in. Here's our third payment in, fourth payment in, fifth payment in, sixth payment in, seventh payment in. So that's seven payments altogether. Now you might be wondering what level of working would you need to do here? I would recommend writing down the value after every second or third payment. Definitely making sure you put the first payment down. Definitely making sure you've got the seventh payment written down. If there was 20 payments altogether, you might go with every fourth or fifth. If there was 60 payments altogether, maybe every 10th. So use your judgment. You don't need to write down every level of working though. Well, that's all we have time for today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, um, there's ways that you can engage further. You could tell somebody such as a teacher or a friend or a sibling who might need some help with this. Um, you could tell us in the comments. We always love your feedback. Like and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you know when the next one in this series is coming out so you don't want to miss what's happening with annuities in the future. And if you've got any questions about something that you saw in today's video, contact us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com on email, or you could engage with us on Facebook and Instagram. It's great to see our followers there. We always advertise when we've got new posts and we don't over post, so it won't get annoying, I do promise. Well, thank you so much for watching today. I'm Natalie McClutchy. You've been watching McClutchy Mass. Have a wonderful day.